Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and we are back looking at our old friend, the Chicago Hub Network. In its last couple of meetings, the Illinois High Speed Rail Commission has been digging into its route selection process for a possible new high speed rail line between Chicago and St. Louis. In the last video on the subject, we looked at an example route that took some liberties with land acquisition. If you recall, we found it feasible to cut the trip down to two hours flat for a projected cost of $32 billion. If you didn't watch it, go check it out. In this one, we'll entertain a more Brightline West style approach, sticking to the interstates when possible to see if they're any good for the purpose and to see what kind of money that might save. Interstates 55 and 57 are the main interstates between Chicago and St. Louis. We'll take a look at both in three scenarios, two of which match up pretty closely to parts being considered by the Illinois High Speed Rail Commission. Let's quickly go over our two main metros. Chicago is a metro of 9.6 million people, third largest in the country. There are three viable ways out of downtown Chicago in the direction of St. Louis. They are all rail routes, so we won't be taking the freeway through the Chicago area. St. Louis is a metro of 2.8 million, the third largest in the Midwest behind Chicago and Minneapolis St. Paul. Chicago and St. Louis are 265 miles apart as the crow flies, which is right in High Speed Rail's wheelhouse. Very quickly for this video, we'll be assuming a modern high speed train set capable of 200 miles per hour like the Alstom Avelia or Siemens Pioneer 220. Let's start off in Chicago at Union Station. In this immediate area, we will follow the Chicago Hub Improvement Program idea to reactivate the St. Charles Airline crossing of the Chicago River. From there, it will split one leg joining the Metra Electric right-of-way, the other Metra's Rock Island line. In this first example, we'll take a look at the Rock Island leg south. We'll come back to Metra Electric later. The Rock Island line sweeps through the Chicago Metro in a southwesterly direction for 40 miles through a mostly suburban landscape until it reaches the city of Joliet. Most of that distance has room for two additional tracks without much issue. Some grade separation would be necessary to get over 110 miles per hour. Joliet is a city of 150,000 on the far southwestern edge of the Chicago Metro. I have the route between the two mostly cruising in the 90 to 125 mile per hour range and taking 30 minutes. Given the time and distance, this is an appropriate place for a first stop. Compare the 30 minute travel time to the 50 minutes Amtrak currently takes along a different route. Leaving Joliet to the west after crossing the Des Plaines River will finally join Interstate 55 and cross the Des Plaines River again. From Joliet to Springfield, Interstate 55 largely parallels Union Pacific right of way. Many rural Midwestern rail rights of way are straight but they also have the disadvantage of running through small towns that have sprung up next to them about every five miles. This is also to the detriment of the interstates installed decades later, but still following rail because those must deviate from a straight line to bypass all those towns. This creates a route that is fine for cars and trucks, but poor for high-speed rail. As a result, trains between Joliet and the next stop at Bloomington Normal would struggle to get above 125 miles per hour, once again cruising mostly in the 90 to 125 mile per hour range. Pulling into the metro of 170,000, we see the 96 miles from Joliet covered in one hour. Compare that to the Amtrak time of one hour. Wait, why is Amtrak also an hour here? Because the Amtrak route is straighter and it can travel at up to 110 miles per hour. It looks like further upgrading the Union Pacific right-of-way that Amtrak is currently using here is likely a better choice than adhering to the freeway. The freeway's inconsistent nature would also make it expensive to meaningfully upgrade, which would defeat the purpose of using the freeway right-of-way to save money. 
conditions are similar from Bloomington Normal to Springfield, which is the state capital and home to a metro population of 200,000. Here I can correct the boo-boo I made in the last video where I said Springfield has a population of 700,000. It does, if you're talking about the one in Massachusetts. In my defense, downtown Springfield, Illinois is pretty beefy for a city of 115,000. Anyway, I have our train from Bloomington Normal taking 45 minutes for an average of 88 miles per hour, which would be 9 minutes faster than Amtrak and doesn't look all that attractive for a whole new route. South of Springfield is the first truly promising part of Interstate 55 where it is arrow straight for 30 miles. This would allow 200 mile per hour travel for the first time, this portion runs for 65 miles and contains three faster sections separated by slower curves. With some effort, it could be high speed the entire way. There's a reason why this general concept is on the Illinois High Speed Rail Commission's radar. Even sticking strictly to the freeway, I have a train over 150 miles per hour for 50 miles here. About 20 miles east of St. Louis, that would slow while entering the suburbs. I have that between 60 and 110 miles per hour the rest of the way into St. Louis. One challenge this idea is faced with is crossing the Mississippi River to reach St. Louis. I have a bridge for such a crossing at $1 billion. But we've made it from Chicago to St. Louis along Interstate 55. Let's check travel times and cost. For these 299 miles, I have a freeway hugging high speed rail train taking 3 hours 13 minutes for an average of 92 miles per hour. I invite you to check out my last video on the subject for comparison. In that, I had a Greenfield 125 mile per hour diesel electric route taking 2 hours 54 minutes, which looks quite attractive in comparison. Full bore high speed rail along that same route made the trip in two hours. Lastly, Amtrak makes the trip in four hours, 45 minutes. Now let's talk about cost. But before we do, let's quickly review my cost estimation algorithm and some sample results. For the 299 mile Interstate 55 Brightline West style route, I have a cost of $23 billion. That is cheaper than the $32 billion for the 200 mile per hour Greenfield route, but 20% more expensive than diesel electric utilizing Greenfield routing and existing railroad rights of way. If these estimates are close, the diesel electric option looks pretty attractive. Okay, route number two, we're back at Chicago Union, and once again, we're going over the Chicago River and the old St. Charles Airline route. Instead, this time we head east to hook up with Metro Electric. Metro Electric has room for additional tracks, but overall, it's a little less flexible than the Rock Island line. Still doable, though. It is straighter and fully grade separated all the way out of the Chicago metro area to the south. As a result, I have it as full speed capable for 40% of the 31 miles necessary to reach University Park, which is Metro Electric's southernmost stop on this line. With a stop here, a high speed train will exit the Chicago Metro 10 minutes faster than the Joliet option at an average speed of 99 miles per hour. South of there, the routing would move through Canadian National Right-of-Way before finally being able to effectively transition to Interstate 57 at Piatone. To the south, conditions aren't much different from Interstate 55. The freeway weaves around towns built up around the straighter freight rail right-of-way. Again, mostly in the 90 to 125 mile per hour range, but with a couple of sections straight enough for short high-speed bursts. This would result in one hour to traverse 102 miles and one hour, 22 minutes from Chicago Union to Champaign-Urbana, a metro of 235,000. This is home to the University of Illinois, which boasts a student body of nearly 60,000. From there, we will branch off to the west to pick up Decatur and Springfield, resulting in the most populated route among those being considered. That will occur along Interstate 72. 
Interstate 72 between Champaign-Urbana and Decatur is just curvy enough to never reach high speed, mostly cruising in the 110 to 125 mile per hour range. This again brings up the idea of skipping electrification and saving about 30% on cost by running 125 mile per hour diesel electrics on the same route, but we'll revisit that when we get to St. Louis again. Coming into Decatur, which has a population of 70,000, I have the trip from Champaign-Urbana taking 27 minutes for an average of 86 miles per hour. Interstate 72 from Decatur to Springfield is a different beast because it runs about a mile south of its corresponding freight rail right-of-way. That allows it to bypass the various small towns along the way without weaving as much, and a section of it is straight enough that about 40% of the 40 miles between the two cities would occur at high speed. That results in a 26-minute trip at an average of 92 miles per hour. A word on the worthiness of these hypotheticals. For Springfield, I have the station located next to the interstate three miles east of downtown and the current station, which would be more desirable. However, there are opportunities to connect the two routings, making the interstate more useful in a more likely real-world route choice. Continuing on, the routing to St. Louis is the same as our Interstate 55 option. Somehow, I have that resulting in the same time and cost as the Interstate 55 option, despite being 10 miles longer. That then seems to be the better option considering the ability to serve an extra 150,000 people given this particular paradigm. Speaking of options, if we ran this as a 125 mile per hour diesel electric, end to end time would be 18 minutes slower and about 30% cheaper at 15 and a half billion. Greenfield diesel electric still looks better at 37 minutes faster for only a billion more. How you ask? That routing would utilize some existing rail rights of way at no additional cost. One last example that I believe is the fastest freeway routing between the two areas. This time we find ourselves back in Champaign-Urbana after following Interstate 57 down there, but this time we'll stick with I-57 south to Effingham and Interstate 70. Same paradigm really, mostly in the 110 to 125 mile per hour range with a couple of short high speed bursts before transitioning to Interstate 70 just before reaching our Effingham station site at Interstate 70 and US 45. Effingham is a city of 12,000 with a plethora of potentially pleasing yet tragically unused town mottos. The 76 miles to reach the burg of Effingham, Illinois from Champaign-Urbana would take 44 minutes for an average of 103 miles per hour. Continuing to the west, the interstate immediately straightens out into a good 20 mile high speed portion. However, after that it hits turbulence and goes back into the mainly 110 to 125 mile per hour paradigm for the rest of the way into the St. Louis Metro. This would hook up with the other two hypothetical routes at the junction of Interstate 70 and Interstate 55 before continuing along the same Interstate 55 route the rest of the way into St. Louis. This is indeed the fastest of the three routes at 3 hours 7 minutes despite being the longest at 311 miles for an average of 100 miles per hour. Also slightly cheaper at 21.5 billion because it's even more rural. My conclusion based on these results is that this city pair is not a great place to apply the freeway running paradigm. The freeways simply aren't straight enough here. It is apparent, however, that Interstate 55 between Springfield and St. Louis is an attractive potential option. And no surprise, that is being considered in a few different alignments the Illinois High Speed Rail Commission is looking at. We'll keep looking at this Chicago to St. Louis concept as the Illinois High Speed Rail Commission works on it. Still left in this mini-series, a look at the freight rights of way. From a distance, they look like good options, but will they hold up to closer scrutiny? Thanks for joining me on this journey. What do you think about the freeway running concept here and how it compares to other options presented? 
let me know in the comments. Plenty more videos to come. Up next is Stu's News on the first of the month. Lots of US high-speed rail news dropping in February, so join me soon to review that. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.